You go to Second City, and there you meet, yeah. you, you hit the sweet spot, because tell me who's there when you're there. Okay, so the first show I saw at Second City, I moved there in the summer of 95. I just graduated college. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to go to a big city that wasn't necessarily Atlanta. You know, I just wanted to see more of the country, more of the world. I moved to Chicago. So the summer of 95, there's this crazy heat wave in Chicago, and it killed people. Like 800 people died oh, in Chicago that year. God. So here I am with my cardboard suitcase. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one to blame but Garsh. yourself now. No, Garsh. No. No. <laughs> like, that you know, train's up in the sky. Okay. No. The elevator train in Chicago. No, I get it. <laughs> so that was my first, uh, you know, taste of life in the big city. And it was so hot. One of my roommates was saying, like, hey, you know what? There's a comedy theater downtown. Uh, they do free improv after their show, uh, cheap beer, and it's air conditioned. I was like, sold. So I went to Second City for one of their free improv sets, and I'll never forget it. That was like my, you know, bing. My, Aha moment. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it would have been, I think, Adam McKay, John Glazer, Kevin Dorff, uh, Rachel Dratch. Jenna Jolovitz and I think Scott Allman mm -hmm. were on stage then. And so that's when I just fell in love. And it really was one of those things where I was like, this is, this is what I do with my friends, just like yep. hanging out. They're doing this for a job. This whole audience is eating them up with a spoon. And so I was like, I want to do this. So I, I signed up for the classes and, you know, I would just keep going back to shows. I would see Tina Fey, who joined the main stage, taking the place of John Glazer. Mm -hmm. It was just so fun to see the evolution of these things. And for me, like the feather in my cap, you know, and of course going all through all that. But from remembering that point in 1995 mm -hmm. to working my way up and then being able to work with Adam McKay and being able to work with John Glazer and Rachel Dratch and Tina Fey and Kevin Dorff and like all these people who like inspired me that's pretty cool yeah. that's it was fun and i do not take it for granted it's funny because you mentioned all those people and i think there's i mean there's a obviously a couple that went to uh snl but there's so many people you mentioned there that ended up being writers for me performers for me and just uh realizing you know that that whole generation of comedic performers were people that I got to work with. And then you come to New York. They were the bridge that got me to you. Yeah, you came to New York and you started doing stuff for us. And then it was really fun because for years you did bits for us. Mm -hmm. Then you get cast in 30 Rock mm -hmm. and you start coming on as a, a celebrity, which was, you know, I mean, yeah. just wrong. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> no. <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was just, it was really cool to see that happen for yeah. you. I'm being, no. it's no it's no fun when I'm sincere, but <laughs> God damn it, it's just not as funny. I'll get the sincere shit out of the way, but it was really nice to see you. You were always a very talented and funny, sweet guy, and you did all this great work for us, and then you became Jack McBrayer, and we would have you on as Jack McBrayer, and the crowd would be like, oh my God, there he is. Right? When you didn't have to be dressed as a mule or a spinning wheel or anything. You know? I just chose to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you still came on as a mule, but that was your choice. So, but you come on, and when Tina approached you to play this page, Kenneth, on uh, on the show on 30 Rock, did you, did you look at the character and just know exactly how to do it? I, I did. Yeah. Um, and I mean, she kind of wrote to you. She did, and it, it, I don't think that's any secret at all, but I knew Tina from Chicago Second City days. Uh, her husband, Jeff Richmond, was my director at mm -hmm. Second City. So I was definitely connected to them, and they knew my work. Um, so when it came time for her to write the pilot for 30 Rock, they did add a page, and I think it was written towards me. I still had to audition and everything, but man, I'm how did you prepare job. for that? Did you? Well, I knew that script backwards and forwards because even though Tina was really rooting for me, you know, I still had to prove myself to all the network, the studio, all that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so I got prepared. And I don't know if you know this story. Do you all know the story about when I put myself on tape for the 30 Rock audition? Mm -hmm. I happened to be in New York. So this would have been the summer of 2005. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be in New York, I think, for an improv festival. Tina got wind that I was in town, so she was like, hey, 
I know you're in town. Will you stop by the NBC casting people, put yourself on tape for the untitled Tina Fey pilot? And I was like, uh, yeah. So I knew, because I knew that she had like kind of tailored it towards me, I needed to crush this. I needed to knock it out of the park. So besides being very prepared, I was like, how can I make the best impression possible? You know, I've actually played a page on Conan's late night show multiple times. I wonder if, so I called up y'all's page desk mm -hmm. and I got up there and I talked to wardrobe. I was like, can I borrow just for 20 minutes a page uniform? And they're like, yeah, whatever. So they put me in there. Your hair and your makeup people like, you know, gussied me up. Uh -huh. And I went upstairs to the whatever floor, put myself on tape for the untitled Tina Fey pilot. And that is the tape that got me through the studio, through the network. It got me the job. It got me the job. <laughs> Is it fair for me to say no. that you own no. whatever you're going to no. say? No. 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 You can't. You no. use no. my people. No. No. Absolutely You use not. my wardrobe. No. You use my makeup. Okay. No. And see, this was supposed to be a nice story. And here you go. <laughs> well, I just, I'm just sure I deserve some no. percentage. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> percentage? <Yes. laughs> That's my last story. <laughs> I did not know that. I did not know that you had... Uh, Stepped on my back to, <laughs> oh. to reach this great height. But it, 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 whatever, I'm used to it. Um, what else is new? Because you play that part, and I occasionally remember, wait a minute, I'm in the early Three Rocks. I, yeah. I completely forgot. Yeah. Because I remembered Tina coming by to shoot a part where I think Tracy was on my show. The episode and then called she, Tracy Does Conan. Yeah. And then the sixth episode of the first season. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. she has... Uh, she, I guess, we used to go out was the idea. Correct. I think I, I was uh, Tina's, uh, Liz Lemon's old boyfriend. Correct. Y'all were supposed to lose your virginity to each other. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. And then, <laughs> which is very plausible. Uh, and oh then God. I did a scene. I remember I had a scene with Alec Baldwin. Correct. On the show once. And that was just the very beginning of the show. Yeah. And then the show took off. Yeah. They did not need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you came back. We made many references to you. Yes. I remembered, I think Tim Conway's Tim character Conway had a great a reference. He made it. He it was such a funny joke. Tim Conway says, um, I saw Conan O'Brien in the hallway with a guitar, because I used to just walk around 30 Rock with a guitar. I always have a guitar on, just a nervous habit. So I think Tim Conway's line was something like, I saw Conan O'Brien. Uh, who is she and why is she so sad? <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly, I think it was like, I saw a tall lesbian with a guitar. Who is Conan and why is she so sad? <laughs> okay, better. <laughs> oh, that's such a great... <laughs> saw a tall lesbian in the whole way. But it was, makes me very happy.